everybody, welcome back to Home Recording Made Easy.com and here on my YouTube channel, and this is our part, oh, I don't know, I think this is part three of our Behringer X Touch series of videos. In this video today, we're gonna to talk about how we uh, program our function keys to do the things that we wanna do in our DAW, as well as how we map plugins uh, to the encoders so you can change and control some of your plugin parameters. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if this is your first time here, I wanna give you something for free. Go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and download my free 90 minute mixing course, perfect for beginners and intermediates. There's a big orange button right on the homepage. You cannot miss it. It's my gift to you just for visiting Home Recording Made Easy. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I will give you something else for free. So here we go. Now, before we get started, if you have not seen the other two videos where we did an unboxing, and then I believe in part two, we walked through almost all the buttons and what they do and the layout of the thing. Links will be in the description box below. Go check out those two videos if you're interested in the X-Touch. Also, there are two Sweetwater links in the um, in the description box if you wanna pick yourself up an X-Touch or the extender, the eight channel extender, which we're gonna talk about in the next video. If you're interested in this for your home studio, check out those links. There are affiliate links, so I thank you in advance for going ahead and doing that. And once again, thank you to Sweetwater for sending me this X-Touch so I can bring this video series to you. It's sponsored in that they gave me the gear, but they did not pay me for the videos and they don't get a chance to see the videos before they go live. Blah, 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 blah. You know the speech already. Uncle Dave is going to be honest with you, tell you what I like and don't like about the unit. So here we go. We're in studio one here. That's my DEW of choice. This time out, we're going to talk about these function buttons, functions one through eight. Right now, if you saw the last video, some of these things are already programmed to do certain things in Studio One, and every DAW will be slightly different, but we can make them do whatever we want them to do, for the most part. Here's how we do that. In Studio One, come down to your console. If you don't see your console, click the Mix button down here on the bottom uh, right-hand corner of the screen. And you see these little icons here. You wanna go to the one that says External Devices, which is right here. Okay, this is Studio One Professional version six, but Studio One Five, Studio One Four, Studio One Three, Studio One Two will all be similar. The screen just may look a little different, but they're located in the same basic location, Mac or PC. Click on that, and you're gonna see I have my X Touch here in the external devices. Uh, and if you click this little drop down arrow, we're gonna go to edit. And we're gonna get this box that pops up right here for external devices. And if you look across the bottom here, we have eight function buttons, and that represents the eight function buttons here on the Behringer X Touch. Some of these are already pre-programmed. I'm gonna show you how to do it from scratch. So if we just right click, we can unassign. And when we unassign, it will go back to the default that it was set up at the factory. So the default for the F1 key is show the inputs. And if I press the inputs, you'll see the inputs pane open and close, okay? If I, but I can change that, right? So if you unassign, if it doesn't say unassign when you right click, that means these are the pre-mapped ones from the factory and you can see, and if you like the pre-mapped ones, you don't need to do anything. But let's say we wanna change those, and I do. So what are the most common things that I do in Studio One? I'm constantly opening and closing the browser with this button down here all the time to get my plugins, to import my files, so on and so forth. So I wanna make F1 to open and close the browser. So we're gonna right click, assign command, and in the search, I'm gonna type browser. And here it is, view browser, right? Hit okay, and now you'll see it changes the browser. When I hit the F1 key, ooh, look at that. Brilliant. Number two is show track. Number two, I think I wanna be the, to hide and show and hide the console, which is already F3, but I'd like to make that my F2 button. So once again, we right click, assign commands, Console, view, show console. Boom, number two, there it is. Look at that, okay? Now, number three, maybe I wanna add a track. Maybe my add tracks dialog box. That might be kinda cool. Let's see if we can do that. Add tracks. Let's see what that does. So now if I hit F3, we get the add tracks dialog box, okay? You get the idea? Hello friend, I hope you're enjoying this video. You know, our YouTube analytics has been telling us that nearly 70% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed to the channel. 
So if you would do me a favor, please hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. It really does help Uncle Dave out. I appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Now let's get back to the video. I'm gonna unassign this and we're gonna sign show channel editor. Here we go. So now that should be on number eight. So when I do that, it's gonna open up the plugin on the selected track. My first insert happens to be this Blackbird uh, Neve preamp plugin, okay? Now, how do I get to the second? I never figured out yet still. How do I now go to the second plugin, which happens to be my EQ? I can cycle through the tracks, but I can't, I can't seem to figure out how to open up the next plugin on the track, but for another video. Okay, so now if I wanna close that, I should be able to, let's see, uh, open channel, I guess I can just hit F8 again, and that'll open and close it, right? Or, uh, yeah, that would do that, right? That would do it. Okay, that would be good. So that's good, so that opens and closes. So you can see how that works. So you can program these eight keys to do whatever you want it to do which is really cool. And once again, if you forget how to get there, you come down over here to your external devices tab, you should see your X touch there, drop the uh, drop down arrow and just hit edit. And you're gonna get this external devices pop up here. That's how you program those eight keys. Now, let's say we wanted to plug, we wanted to, we wanted to um, add a plugin and we wanted to control that plugin, right? So let's try that. So what do we do first? So the first thing we need to do is we need to come up here, uh, I believe it's to the top here, go under X touch, see up here? You're gonna get that same box that pops up, externals devices. So you can either do it from the external devices window or you can do it from there. And you see these things up here, where it says bypass all monitor, so on and so forth. That, if we go over to plugin, that will allow us, I believe, to control the parameters and it'll do it to the encoder. And it also now on the on the encoder assign goes to the plugin um, button. If I go back to track, see what it does? It switches over to track. See this on the on the on the X touch up here, the encoder assign. I believe I want to go to plugin. Okay. Now I'm going to open up the plugin that I want to do. Let's do let's do a third party plugin. All right. Let's move this down out of the way so everybody can see. And let's say I want to control the preamp. If I just click on that, you'll see at the top left-hand corner of Studio One, it says preamp sensitivity, and there's a little hand. If I take that little hand and I left click and I drag it down to this first box, now it's on this first encoder. And if I touch this first encoder, look what it does on the plugin. Look at that, great, right? If I wanna do, let's say the hum level on this particular plugin to be number two, single click, up here at the top, it says hum level. I'm gonna take that hand, gonna left click, gonna drag it down here, and then encoder number two should be the hum level. And it is. I can press it in to reset it, or I can turn it, okay? That's pretty cool. Now, what if it was a third party plugin, or, or excuse me, a stock plugin, like an EQ? Let's close this, let's open up our EQ. Let's move this over here, so this is just the pro EQ. Now this looks like it's already mapped. Let's see, is this already mapped? It sure is. The stock plugin's already mapped for this. All right, so if I wanted to turn on, how do I turn on? I don't know if I could do that. Oh, there it is. So if I wanna go up here, it's already pre-mapped because you could see it across the across here. I, again, depending on your DAW, your stock plugin may already, may already be pre-mapped. In this case, it is. But let's say it wasn't. It would be done exactly the same way. Let's say I right-click on it and I unassign. I can unassign all of these just by unclicking. And the reason why this is helpful is because if you have a plugin that has more than eight parameters, because we only have eight encoders, you can assign whatever the most common parameters that you would do. So once again, let's say I wanted to... Uh, the, the low frequency, let's say I wanted to first change the frequency. I just click on that once, you'll see up here low frequency. I take this and I drag it down here. Now that encoder is choosing my low frequency. If I want my gain for the low frequency to be the next pot, just double click. Again, low frequency gain, take the hand, drag it down. Now this second encoder will be that, so I can do this. See that? So you can do that. So if it's not already pre-mapped, 
you can unassign and reassign them to whatever you want for your controls. But again, you're limited to eight parameters because you only have eight encoders, which is fine. Now, if you have an extender on your unit, which we'll show uh, in the next couple of videos, those also have encoders as well. So that you should be able then to have eight and eight, 16 parameters that you can program. So if you have a plugin with a lot of different controls, here's the problem though. What you're gonna find is on the LCD screen, although this one seems to be okay, it'll give you a little description of what the parameter is, low frequency, free, low, low frequency, the frequency selector, low frequency gain, but some of those, Controls, depending on the plugin, are going to be too long. They're going to abbreviate. You may not know what they are. In this external devices window, you can't go in and rename these, which I wish you could. I wish you could rename that, but you can't. So you just have to be aware of that. So once again, you open up the external devices box, you click the plugin, or you click it up here on your X touch, and then you just right click and you assign just like you do for the function keys. It really is that simple and is kind of cool. And you only have to do it once because once you do it once, it should work every single time. So let's check that. We assign two parameters to this Pro EQ. Let's close that. Let's put the Pro EQ over here on the room track, on track number, or on the, on the overheads, track number eight. So let's select track number eight. Let's go ahead and let's get that Pro EQ from PreSonus and let's see if it remembers the mapping. It should. And again, this is a feature that's standard on most DAW controllers. Most of the ones that we've done in the past, um, we've done this same type of thing, the fader port, the SSL. You only have to map it once. So once we do that, you'll see those two parameters are right here, right? Now you have to be, you have to turn on the, now maybe the, maybe the third parameter will be actually want to turn on the frequency, you have to activate it. So you could do that with your mouse, or once again, you can do it with the external devices window. So maybe we make one of those encoders. For now, we'll just do encoder number three, even though that may not make sense. So if we just click this, active, unactive, come up here to the hand, drag it down to, to encoder number three, and that will turn the low frequency band on and off. So you can do that. But once again, we have, we have what do we have? Two, four, six, eight, 10, plus the on and off. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, that would take 15 encoders to do these three things on a five band EQ. So some of this, you're still gonna use the mouse and the keyboard, but some of this stuff you can do just by doing this, right? So you only have to program it once and it'll stay programmed. Now that we have that and we have all our F keys are open, this is great. And you can just put some console tape here a little bit of a little bit of tape and just label what these buttons do that's totally fine if you don't remember the only downfall to this as i said in the last video is when i hit these function keys too the the keys don't light up um, and I don't like that the keys aren't backlit and they don't light up like they do over here at the encoder assign i wish it did that but it does not so let's see we have anything else no that's it for this video we have Assign the function keys, plug in mapping and control. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. Again, check the other videos in the description box below. You can check out the other Behringer X-Touch videos we have and make sure you like, share, subscribe and hit that notification bell because we are gonna do a handful of more videos around the Behringer X-Touch. We're gonna get an extender out here. We're gonna see how that's gonna work. We're gonna talk about things in the transport section. We're gonna move around and I'm gonna try to get down in here and give you the basics. So when you get this home and get it out of the box for the first time, you watch a handful of Uncle Dave's videos and you should be up and running with no fuss and no muss. So thank you so much for watching this video. As I said at the beginning, I want to give you something else here for free. Make sure you go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Get yourself that free mixing course, okay? Make sure you take that course. You're going to love it. If you like Uncle Dave's style of teaching and you want to purchase one of my other courses on the website, and I have everything from EQ to compression, Parallel compression, mixing, mastering, recording, everything from beginner, intermediate, and advanced level training. I want to give you a 25% discount code. Use the coupon code YouTube25. That will take 25% off any one of the paid training courses on my website. And last but not least, and I should have said this at the beginning of the video, my, uh, my YouTube analytic 
uh, is telling me that almost 80% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed to the channel. So if you do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs, uh, hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. It really does help me. 80% of you don't that watch my channel aren't subscribed. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. I have almost a thousand videos that'll help you with all different aspects of your home studio. So until the next video with the X Touch, my name's been Dave with Home Recording Made Easy.com. Thank you so very much for watching me today. And I'll see you guys in the next video.